The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. One time, the late great golf champion Babe Didrikson Zaharias disqualified herself from a major golf tournament for having hit the wrong ball, some other player's ball, out of the rough. A friend came to her and said, but nobody would have known about it. But Babe Didrikson Zaharias replied, but I would have known about it. Dare to be true to your principles. Be true to the best you know. Be loyal to the royal in your lineage, for you are a son or daughter of the living God. And dare to live up to that, to your full potential and possibility. Years ago, the works of the painter Malaeus had been collected in a gallery in London, England. And one ardent appreciator of his prowess as a painter, his genius, was Lady Constance Leslie. That morning she arose early and went to be there for the very opening of the exhibition. As she was ascending up the stairs toward the gallery, she encountered the painter Malaeus himself coming down the stairs, going out, leaving the exhibition, and his head was bowed down. He looked dejected, disconsolate. So she accosted him. He looked up, and she saw that there were tears welling in his eyes. Ah, Lady Constance, the painter said, you have found me in tears. He said, I'm not ashamed of saying that in looking at my earliest paintings, the earliest artwork that I ever did, I've been overcome this morning with sadness and chagrin that I so far have failed in my maturity to fulfill the forecasts of my youth. But what of you? What of the forecasts of your youth? What you might have been, what you might have become, what you might have done with your life, there is still time to begin it. God is a God of second chances. Read the story of Simon Peter, who denied his master, yet was given another chance. Remember, with God, nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible. God wants you to be all that you can be, to fulfill your true potentials as a son or daughter of God, fearless of life, fearless of death, of time and eternity, living in truth, beauty, and goodness, and love for God and others, the two great commandments. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, mind, and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Then life can become a joy, an adventure. Dennis Waitley wrote, time is an equal opportunity employer. Each human being has exactly the same number of hours and minutes every day. Rich people can't buy more hours in their days. Scientists can't invent new minutes for you to spend. You can't save time to spend it on another day by not spending it on one day. Even so, time is amazingly fair. It is forgiving. No matter how much time you have wasted in your past, you still have a whole, entire, and complete tomorrow. 24 hours in that day. Success depends upon using that wisely, by planning and setting priorities. Some lives, however, are too great to be called merely successful. You can have a great life in love and power and peace and spiritual serenity in your soul. You may say, but I've made so many mistakes in my past life. I've done so many things that were wrong or not well thought out, and I've blundered and I've fumbled. Remember, God can make all things new. Think of the way that artists are able to restore works of art. I've read of them restoring pictures, paintings, cleansing them from the dust and filth that have gathered in the course of the years, restoring them to something like the brilliance and the beauty they originally had when they left the painter's easel. I've read of them restoring old buildings, grand old cathedrals, monuments of the genius and devotion of past generations, which had begun to show signs of decay and deterioration. And yet there is a restoration greater by far than the restoration of some great old master painting or some architectural wonder, and that is the restoration of the human life when the human life is given wholly, totally, with commitment and consecrated devotion to God. God will make all things new. God can transform your life. Phillips Brooks wrote, Do not pray for an easy life. Pray to be a stronger person. Do not pray for tasks equal to your powers. Pray for powers equal to your tasks. The kingdom of God is within you. There's a fragment of infinity, a glowing ember of eternity, a spark of spirit, something of the divine within your mind, which is responding in this moment, wherever you are on this planet, listening to this worldwide broadcast, which responds to this truth, to what you're hearing and to what I am saying. You know in your heart of hearts and your soul of souls, that there is more to you than just a mere physical body, that there's more to you than contained between your haircut and your toenails. You are not just a physical being. 
You are spiritual. You have a soul. Indeed, you are a soul. And God has created you to live in love and joy and service, to be a builder of the great kingdom of God, God's plans and purposes on this earth. And it can begin for you, if it's never begun before, it can begin this very moment, if you will have the faith to dare to believe that you are infinitely loved by the infinite God who has a great good will for your life, not just filled with material blessings, power, wealth, and fame, but with the spiritual satisfactions of living. The author Leo Tolstoy was once accosted by a beggar on the streets of Moscow. This poor man was cold, hungry, and timidly he held out a coarse hand for coins. This great novelist looked with pity on the supplicant. He searched his pockets for money but he couldn't find one single coin. So Tolstoy placed his empty hand on the shoulder of this beggar on the Moscow street and said, I'm sorry, I have nothing with me, brother. I have nothing to give you. But the beggar raised his head and showed his eyes suffused with welling tears, and he replied, never mind, brother. That too, your hand on my shoulder, that too was a gift that I needed. A friendly word will send a man or woman down and out, away with new inspiration that helps that person to face the tests of life without flinching. It isn't always silver and gold and stocks and bonds that are needed. There's love in a handshake, benediction in a kindly word. There's compassion and care and concern. Do all the good you can to all the people you can and all the ways you can for as long as you can and spread love, joy, enthusiasm, good cheer and peace wherever you go. You will be part of building God's kingdom on this earth. I read about a young artist in Rome who possessed great talent, who was urged by his friends to establish an artistic studio of his own, but he refused. He said, no, I have found my master. I've decided that I want to paint like Raphael, and to do that I must be near Raphael so that I can study his methods, catch his spirit, listen to his instruction, learn his ways. That is what happens to you when you find God. You want to be near God, to have a closer fellowship, a vital daily companionship with God, to practice the presence of God, to share your inner life with God, to get to know God to the joy of your soul, to praise, laud, and honor, and worship God. There is a joy which transcends every other pleasure or happiness you have ever had in your life. In the praising and worshiping of God, there is something about it. You totally forget about yourself. You give yourself to God. You adore, you worship the one who created this entire cosmos, this universe of universes, the star clusters, the nebula, the great spiral wheels of outer space, the God who, through light years and light years of existence of time and space, has brought you to be, who loves you, who knows your name, knows the very number of hairs on your head, and who loves you. And there is a soul satisfaction in loving God and worshiping God, unequaled, unparalleled, unrivaled by any other experience you have ever had in your life. No happiness, entertainment, amusement, pleasure which you've ever experienced can begin to impinge upon the gladness for God, the joy, the sheer joy of worship of God, love of God, the God who brought you into being, who loves you with an everlasting love which will not let you go and created you to live not in fear but in faith. The great military general Sherman used to say that when he was at the front of a battle, on the firing line, leading and directing his troops, he was full of hope. He felt sure of victory. He was unafraid. But when he went to the back of the battle, when he went to the rear of his troops, where the wounded were being brought back, where stragglers and deserters lurked, He began to be filled with fear and depression. If you in your life want to overcome your doubts, your anxieties, your discouragements and depressions, if you will greet the day with cheer and aggressively go forth to meet the problems, the challenges, the decisions and difficulties of your life with faith and fortitude, you will achieve spiritual victory. Get into the battle. Get on the front line. Move forward in the fight against intolerance, cruelty, bigotry and hate. I wrote in a song years ago, Soldiers of the Circles, lift your battle cry, peace on earth, goodwill to men, praise to God on high. Said Jesus, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And Soren Kierkegaard, the philosopher, said, purity of heart is to will one thing, to have one great master motive in your life, to keep your eye always upon your goal. One time back in my home state of Kansas, there were two boys playing out in the snow one day. One of them said to the other one, let's see who can make the straightest path by walking in the snow. And his companion accepted the challenge, 
They started out. One boy fixed his eyes on a distant tree, began walking along without taking his eyes off of that tree. The other boy set his eyes on the tree also, began walking, but after he'd gone a few steps, a short distance, he turned to look back to see how he was doing, see how true his course was in the snow, went a little distance further, again turned, looked back, went forward again, turned, looked back to see how straight his path was. When they finally arrived at that tree, each halted, looked back. One path was true and straight as an arrow. The other ran a zigzag uneven course. One boy said, how did you get your path so straight? The other lad replied, I just set my eyes on that tree and I kept my eyes on that tree till I got to the end. You kept stopping and looking back and wandering off your course. So it is with your life. Press ever forward. Don't be forever looking back. Fix your eyes on the great goal, the purpose, the plan for your life, God's will for your life. Keep your attention fixed on that. It is written, the double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And purity of heart is to will one thing. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Don't keep forever looking back. Regret and remorse are the mildew and fungus of life. Abandon them. Paul said, forgetting those things which are past, I press forward to the high mark of my calling in God. So may it be with you, the purity of heart, the joy, the gladness of living as you were born and created to live as a son or daughter of God, beginning here, beginning now, and lasting for eternity. Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. We want to hear from you. Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written free literature on these things, on the spiritual life, about how do you pray, how do you get a deeper relationship with God? How about getting along with difficult people? What about life after death? All this literature, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation, writing to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. United States of America. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.